From the iHeartRadio studios in New York City, come fans of the greatest rock and roll band hailing from Hollywood, California. Dissecting all things Guns N' Roses and anything else distorted. Because you know what the fuck you are! This is Appetite for Distortion. Try it again! And welcome to the podcast, Appetite for Distortion. My name is Brando. Episode 40. Holy shnikes. That is ridiculous. I can't believe I've done 40 episodes of this Guns N' Roses podcast. And this is the first one of 2018 and kicking it off. I mean, I can't believe this. Uh, I'm so looking forward to this conversation. London Hudson and Nico. I don't want to pronounce his last name uh, incorrectly. I'll ask him uh, during the interview from Classless Act. And if you aren't familiar with the band, you will be soon enough. And you should recognize London Hudson's name. Hudson, of course, Saul Hudson being Slash. Yes, London is Slash's 15-year-old son, a drummer, not a guitarist. We will ask him why when they call in in just a few minutes. And uh, I guess I cannot wait. And with me today, uh, as we're going to we continue the, the AFD show, and last episode was Scotto's last, we will, we will miss him. He's not dead, so uh, we will just miss him from the show. And he may come on uh, future episodes. We shall see. Uh, but today, you know, I'm going to get random, not random, but co-host who I think could add to the show, just like John Miller, just like Art Devana. So today I'm bringing in a buddy of mine, Mickey Squeeze. What's up, Brando? And uh, Mickey, I've mentioned uh, your band on the show before. Cool. Uh, Thank you very much. Midnight Mob. Yes. So I wanted to bring in, uh, bring Mickey on because uh, Mickey's a guitarist and, you know, a local NYC band and you can probably relate more to uh, to Nico in London, what it's like to build a band and auditioning processes and all that stuff. So I know you can help me. Uh, but in, also, in addition, you're just a huge motherfucking Guns N' Roses fan. And that's yes, the one of the f- things that, you know, we've been on the radio before together and something that we connected with. And uh, I know you've you've met Duff before, so I just feel like you would be a good person to have on and, you know, introduce yourself to... You know, the AFD audience. And uh, I can also, you know, I'm going to give you one of these. Uh, I don't know if you, I play sound bites on the show. And I don't need to talk to you on the show because I already know that you're one. Right. You're, you're a bad apple. Bad apples. bad apples is what I like to call our our listeners, our family. You know, Taylor Swift has her Swifties. Beyonce has her Bayhive. We have our bad apples. Bad apples. Damn what? So you're a bad apple. So I wanted to bring you on. And uh, what's going on with uh, with you and, and the bands? Because, you know, Blackie's one of my favorite lead singers. I often describe her singing as if Axel and Glenn Danzig had a, had a female <laughs> girl, had a female girl, had a, a female baby, had a little girl, uh, that would be Blackie's voice. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So my name's Mickey. I play guitar uh, in the band Midnight Mob. And um, you can visit us at midnightmob.com. Uh, currently, we are on a uh, hiatus at the moment. Uh, it's our singer, Blackie, as you brought up. She's been having some medical problems with her voice and everything. Uh, we've been playing for a bunch of years. Uh, yes, we did meet um, Duff McKagan. He, we, we played in 2014. We played in Times Square uh, at the CBGB's mu- Music Festival, opening for Jane's Addiction. And uh, Duff was there. He saw our set. And it was really cool. And it was really cool uh, looking back on the photos and seeing uh, him behind me while I was playing guitar. And I had no idea he was standing there. Uh, but I was the responsible one in the band, so I didn't actually talk to him. Everyone else did. Um, I was putting away the gear, being that guy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're kind of on a hiatus at the moment. But we've done a lot of cool things uh, over the years. Well, you're wearing your uh, Sturgis shirt right now. Yeah, yeah. So we played um, Sturgis last year in South Dakota. It's the motorcycle uh, rally, the, the huge one. And uh, we played with uh, Three Doors Down, and we played with Kid Rock, uh, did the main stage. And it was an amazing experience. Uh, this is my, like, favorite shirt now. And the Sturgis community, I got to tell you, man, they are a family. Like, you you play there, and you do well, and they rev their engines for you and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and everyone brings you in to, like, like you're part of the family with Sturgis, and it's really cool. That's so cool that you guys get to do festivals like mm-hmm. that. And uh, I know you, you've played with uh, with Shine Down before, right? Yeah. So we did it. We did another one with. Uh, it was really, really another one, wild one. So we're getting on stage. We're setting up, and then behind us is uh, Trivium, 
And then, oh yeah, we've had uh, Apollo and uh, Corey oh, cool. on the show. Yeah, everyone's like crazy nice. Yeah, it was like Trivium, Seven Dust, Coed and Cambria. Love uh, Coed. Sh- yeah, Shine Down. A uh, ghost was on that set, and then the stage next to us was uh, Megadeth, six a.m. and all that stuff. It was really funny because when we pulled in the lot, uh, everyone's got like a coach bus and a giant trailer on the back of it <laughs> with their logo and all this kind of stuff on it. And then we're pulling in with a fifteen passenger van, and their trailers were way bigger than our van. <laughs> like it was pretty wild. You're the underdog, and, yeah. And of course, the name of your van is uh, Glenn Van Zig. <laughs> That's yeah. why I, I love this van. Yeah. Before I mean, when I first heard. Uh, uh, all for nothing, and just like your your song is The Walking Dead, and you know your earlier stuff where it's like more hardcore misfits kind of rock, and, mm-hmm. and the later stuff which is just uh, I don't know you've expanded your sound and things that we've spoken about on this podcast. Are just where are all the good young rock bands? And I always often bring up Midnight Mob, and I hope Blackie's voice gets better uh, sooner rather than later. Are we all sure? Because I, I I I always go. I don't go out to concerts a lot unless it's a Guns N' Roses show. Right, I, right. I, I've seen you guys a handful of times all over the island, so I'm looking forward to that. And then of course, uh, what again? What you can bring to the table talking to uh, to London and, and Nico and your perspective? Because we've had a lot of conversations off the air about. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what it takes to be in a band, and what's wrong with rock today. You know we need bands like Midnight Mob. We need bands like Classless Act. You know to to bring back what seems to be fading away, and that's real, true grit, rock and roll. Yeah, it's one of those things we everyone's trying to figure out. You know, and where is how do you find that music? How do you find rock music? Because it's not given to you anymore. No, so a lot of conversations we've had, you know, whether it's Spotify, I know you guys are on uh, Reverb Nation as well. Mm-hmm. So it's, um, these are questions, again, I'm going to ask uh, London and Nico, because it's it's different. They have the help of Slash, you yeah. know, and is that, does that make it easier? Does that make it harder? Uh, we don't know. So what you guys have been able to accomplish, you know, just being for lack, I don't mean, no insult, of course, like for no names. Even sure. Though, no, we're, oh. we're still definitely known. It's kind of crazy. Like we literally, uh, we started in a garage in Massapequa, suburb of Long Island. And uh, I think that's where D. Snyder is from. D. Snyder, Brian Setzer, Jerry Seinfeld, yeah. the Baldwin brothers. Yeah, everyone, it's like Joey it, Buttafuoco, Amy lot, Fisher. A lot of people are from Long Island, but Massapequa <laughs> seems to be the Steve, hub. I think Gutenberg. Yeah. I think. He just liked my tweet, by the yeah. way. I, I think they're, everyone's from Massapequa. I don't know why. I said to is. Steve Gutenberg, I haven't, yeah. I, I tweeted him, I was like, I haven't seen any Star Wars movies, which is true. Oh, yeah, I saw the, your post on but that. But I've one. seen yeah. all seven police academies. <laughs> and he liked yeah. my tweet. <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> that made me happy. <laughs> I, have, I have them also on uh, DVD. So that's cool. Uh, one thing, because uh, London and Nico are calling up uh, pretty soon. Uh, have you seen Guns N' Roses live? Have you seen Velvet live or any of the Duff? Uh, what experiences have you had? My live experience with any incarnation of any of those members, um, no, I've never seen Guns N' Roses live. <gasps> I, I will. I told myself if they ever reunited with Izzy, I would spend hundreds of dollars on oh, it. Okay, so you're but, waiting for Izzy. Okay. Yeah, I don't, you know, uh, for me financially, it's just not worth it really to go out to see Guns N' Roses. I don't know, for me, it's like, it's Izzy Stradlin for me. It's like he, that's my Guns N' Roses band. That's fair. I I don't care about Adler, Sorum. It could be either or or both. It doesn't even matter. Neither. But Izzy Stradlin for me would be why I'd go see You know what? I get that. And those are the people that really stick to not seeing the reunion. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I mean, I love Izzy, but it was Axel and Slash. I'm like, that's, I don't care. You know, I saw when it was just Axel and Bucket or DJ, sure. or, and I just wanted to see Axel. But I, I would like to see the show, regardless, just to see a show because it's so extravagant and over the top and awesome. So you haven't seen them, yeah? But I've seen um, Velvet Revolver when they were touring. I think it was Libertad album. I saw them when they came to Jones Beach. Okay, uh, that was all right. I was <laughs> I was too into that one. Uh, I do like the Contraband album a lot. A uh, lot more than the Libertad album, and then even when we interviewed Dave, Dave Kushner, he's like, "We rushed that record." The Libertad album, yeah, yeah, it just didn't seem right. I don't know. The other one felt better. He, I felt mean, it's right. coming from yeah. his mouth. He said the same thing. He's like, "We felt it felt rushed." I think they just wanted to get it out, and they changed producers and all this crap. So, yeah, but I hear uh, it. Yeah, it's it's rough. And the other experience I've had um, was well, we were supposed to play with Steven Adler when he was touring. But 
as Adler. You know, he's doing Adler's that. Appetite or just Adler? Just Adler. Okay. And he was doing his um, like hard rock band as Adler. And uh, we were supposed to play with him in Philly, but that's when he put himself back on into rehab. So oh. the show got canceled. Oh. <laughs> Well, at least you have that story. I was supposed to yeah, open for Stephen was, Adler, but he went to rehab. I was really looking forward to it, too, because, you know, I, from everything I've seen and heard, he's like a really cool guy. I would just like just talk to him about music a little bit. I hear nothing less than he's like the sweetest guy in the world. And yeah. we're going to talk to uh, London and Nico uh, actually about that now as they're they're calling up because I just saw them recently uh, play with, with Adler. So let me, uh, let me pick up the phone. Sounds good. I'm so honored to have both of these guys on the phone. I don't know if this is your... I was told this is like, you haven't done many interviews, and that would be London uh, Hudson. Uh, and uh, Nico... Uh, am I getting your name right? Uh, Sangaris? San Garris. Yeah, San Garris. San Garris, okay. Uh, I will not edit that out because I want to make myself sound stupid. So, uh, <laughs> Nico San Garris, I spoke to your dad, Chris, who helped me out uh, with this interview uh, with you in London and in Classless Act. You know, I heard about uh, this band, of course, uh, this being a Guns N' Roses podcast and, and following all the members and former members. And I'm like, this is so cool. Like, this this young band that started. And once I, I, I mean, as of last night, as we're recording this, yes, it's a podcast, but I try to be as, as much in real time as possible. So I will say... Happy New Year to you both. Oh, thank uh, you. Because I'm not going to, uh, this will air uh, in 2018. So this will be the first AFD show of 2018. So I appreciate you guys being oh, wow. my, oh, awesome. my first guest. Thank you so much for like yeah. having us. You know, This is really cool. See, I guess the that's, thing, so. that's the first question. When you said this is really cool and, and, uh, and Chris said uh, that London and Nico are excited about it. I kept thinking to myself, why wouldn't anyone want to talk to these kids? You know, following you on Instagram, you, you all seem cool. Like, just like, I, I probably wouldn't have been able to hang out with you at 15 years old. I don't know if I was that cool. Uh, watching your videos of you guys jamming, you're awesome. And obviously with the, you know, the Guns N' Roses ties, why wouldn't people want to talk to you? So, um, you know, yeah. the it, the love goes both ways. I'm, 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 I'm surprised. So welcome, officially. I'll shut up now. <laughs> so uh, since uh, we said this off the air, so uh, London, since we know who's who, say hello, London. Hi. Yeah, I'm London. <laughs> and uh, Nico? I'm Nico. Hi. All right. Well, that, that's very... Uh, that's uh, to the point. Yeah. I know those voices. Yeah, yeah. yeah basically <laughs> to the point. So I want to know how uh, London and Nico first met. Are you guys both 15 years old? Yeah. Yeah. We met years back, like 2007. 2007. His mom uh, was my mom's makeup artist. So... And then she would just bring him over, and then we hung out, and then we've known each other ever since. Yeah, and he'd, like, occasionally, you know, he was always kind of, like, a pain in the ass, and he'd <laughs> try to drown me in his pool. And he'd always, you know, strangle me, and yeah, he, was, he was a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how most friendships are based off of. It's very true. Trying to murder the other yeah. friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like to beat each other up. Definitely. Yeah, I've uh, I've pushed Mickey in front of a train or yeah, two. You know, it was I jumped good. Oh man! So Nico's mom was the hairdresser for London's mom. No, the makeup artist. Makeup artist. Makeup artist. Makeup Forget artist. Not doing that. But I got the I got the chain of command though. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's I guess that's, I guess that's important. Not to it's cosmetics, man. Yeah, not to devalue what uh, Nico's mom does. I want to make sure I get it right. You got to look good. Makeup artist. Yes, exactly. Mm. Uh, so you guys didn't? Are you both in high school? Or are you doing the band full time, or right. trying to do? Yeah, trying to do it full time. But I'm a freshman, and you're a, and Nico's a sophomore. Yeah. When I was a freshman, man, in high school, dude, I don't even know if I could think back that far, dude. I moved in the middle <laughs> of ninth grade, so which is the worst. Who moves their freshman year? It's like I had no friends. Go to a place where there were even uh, less friends. Mm. I could not talk yeah. to girls, 100%. I did not kiss my first girl until I was 17. And I can have to uh, imagine. And you, know, you, can, you can kind of, yeah, they're kind of mocking me already. Uh, you don't have to say no. anything in front of your dad, but I have to imagine, you, you know, because you're both good-looking kids and you're in a band. So I can't imagine what that's like to be at, at, at 15. So uh, then are, are you balancing school in the band, uh, Nico? You said you were, uh, no, uh, London, you said you were a freshman? Yeah, I'm a freshman. I'm balancing school it's difficult for like rehearsals and stuff because i always find myself having to do homework late night and then I, my like sleeping schedule just gets fucked 
Yeah, it sucks, uh, dude. Trying to balance uh, stuff. I mean, uh, you know, I've been playing a band forever and balancing work and like that life of rehearsal and doing all sorts of other stuff, interviews like you're doing now and, and all that kind of stuff. It's, it gets out of control after a while, but you just keep doing it because you love music. I mean, I remember when I was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. When I was like 14 years old, man, I think I was learning. I remember I did the uh, Hotel Freezes, Hotel California version, uh, Hell Freezes Over version. I don't know if you guys heard that. It's an all acoustic. It's really fucking cool. Mm-mm. But um, yeah, it's a great version of Hotel California. I remember learning that on guitar with my buddy and stuff. And we did a recital. And Patience actually was the Guns N' Roses, another Guns N' Roses song I was learning at the time. And Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You with Zeppelin was what I was doing. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that I, love that. I remember that very, very specifically. I'm wondering, then, how do you manage for both of you? Because uh, you obviously have to do your homework. You have to do algebra before you rehearse. Yeah, my, my mom's more like that. She's more like, you got to do your homework and stuff. But what I do is, I don't know, I just, like, take out other things in my schedule. Like, instead of going out, as much like I'm more rehearsing all the time. Yeah. And just with me and Nico and the band hanging out and then jamming all the time. That's yeah. cool. And my parents are more my parents are more lenient, you know, I can I can get teased, you know. So I just <laughs> a lot of times I can get away with not doing stuff if I have rehearsal or Well, be just blessed. Don't do anything. You're yeah. blessed. You guys are both <laughs> blessed because uh for me and nice. me being uh, Jewish and having a Jewish mother <laughs> Oh my God! If I got if I got an A minus, why didn't you get an A? I don't know, Mom. That's why I'm in therapy. Leave me alone. Uh, that, so then I'm I'm curious, how is it having your your dad says uh, and you know, I guess also your your parents for you uh, in London? There's a lot of young acts, whether you can be in a band or a, an actor. Of course, you know, uh, famously, I'm sure even though you guys are young, I'm sure you're familiar with Home Alone uh, and Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. Back in the day, he had to sue his parents. Uh, but you can tell wow. the the love and support that both of you, all your parents give you. You can see it. So is that weird saying, "Hey, Dad, leave me alone," or "Hey, Mom, leave me alone"? You know, I'm in this band. I have my own vision. Or do you kind of accept what guidance they may give you? Um, well, my dad, he's he's very involved with like the whole thing. You know, me and him like wrote a lot of the songs together and everything. So um, I always joke with him and call him Joe Jackson because he has this kind of like. He has a he has a big influence, and he really just is straight to the point and criticizing all of us. And but he's a really good guide, you know. So it's like the guide is is more important because if we didn't have him, we wouldn't be rehearsing as much. And you know, he keeps us on track because we're in the end we're just kids, you know. It's like we're, we're not always just kids, but you know, but it's sure. like we don't have as much discipline as a parent would, you know. That's so. that's totally true. Yeah, you definitely need that uh, push to. Uh, get you to keep doing it, you know, day in, day out and everything. Otherwise, you know, I mean, I was growing up too. I mean, just running outside and playing with my friends and stuff. And um, But you guys seem like you're focused on doing music and that's what you want to push for. So it's good to have that voice behind you to get you on track, you know, day in, day out. Do you guys yeah. practice like um, every, is this like an every day, five days a week or like how do, how do you schedule it? We usually practice every day after school. And if we don't, we're practicing by ourselves. Okay. And yeah. We're always jamming, man. How did the idea of a band first start, or was it just natural? Because, I mean, you know, uh, London, the, growing up in your family, I can only imagine it's natural. I do want to ask you after how you, you know, got into the drums as opposed to your dad. Yeah. Uh, but what decision did you guys make to say, hey, we want to ste- start a serious band instead of just like, hey, you know, we're in high school, we can jam, uh, you know, play gigs every now and then, you know, we're still in school. There really n- shouldn't be any pressure. Um, but what made you like, hey, we want to do this. We want to find a singer. We want to, you know, make this for real. It, it all started out like about two summers ago, right? One last summer. One, that was last summer? Yeah, it okay. felt like a long time. But yeah, it was like a long time, but it was last summer. We were at... Uh, the, the third street promenade in Santa Monica and it's like an outdoor mall and out there they over there they have like a bunch of street performers and we were watching one of the acts and we were just going around shopping and there was another one of our old childhood friends who used to hang out with us when we were kids a lot and he told us we should start a band and then uh, that weekend Nico has like a we we went over to Nico's house and he has like a little studio in his house, and I, I sat around the drums and them on guitars and we kind of just 
learned a cover uh, of a song and then jammed and then wrote a song and then that other guitar player didn't work out. Yeah, we were doing uh, Tom Petty covers and uh, no, we were doing Running Down a Dream and uh, Smashing, uh, Pumpkins. Sma- uh, Smashing Pumpkins Today. Hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, Running Down the Dream was one of my first songs I learned too. The da na 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 na. That that riff, yeah. Star riff. Yeah, you could groove on that. It's good. And we stopped doing covers because it's like playing covers is almost harder than playing original songs because it's like you have to play it like the cover. Right. We weren't very good last year, you know. Yeah. So we There's kinda... rules to it. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you know it's your own song, it doesn't really matter. You do whatever you want and kind of just right. vibe off each other. That's cool. So then, yeah, that's basically all right. So then, uh, we're getting some names. I want to know who you, you both of you uh, grew up listening to. I mean, there may be some obvious ones in there, but I, I want to hear it uh, from from both of you. Uh, who did you grow up listening to, Nico? Um, me and my dad always like since forever have been listening to like ACDC, and ACDC was is is our favorite band, you know. Like, so we listened to like everything ACDC, you know. And then eventually, like, we were friends with. Um, london and, and slash for a while and and i'm like okay well like and i kept hearing like welcome to the jungle on the radio i'm like what else what else what other songs do they have so <laughs> we listened to appetite and like that was my breakfast lunch and dinner for like the next like four months of my life and like that was like you know one of my favorite albums ever and then you know aerosmith is one of my favorite bands led zeppelin and you know um yeah stuff like that you know what about you, London? Oh, uh, well, Guns N' Roses. That's <laughs> I just wanted to hear it from you. <laughs> yeah, I've grown up now to the point where it kind of gets boring. Right. You know, listen to it. Uh, so that was definitely a big influence. Motorhead, yeah, Queen, Motorhead was uh, Metallica, Pantera. Oh, man, you're like uh, walking down my road there. That was that was all my yeah. my influences when I was like your age. It was the same thing. I was the only I was the weird kid listening to Motorhead when everyone was listening to like Backstreet Boys. <laughs> it was like all I was the I was that Ozzy Motorhead Guns N' Roses Megadeth Pantera guy, and and Tom Petty. You know, it was, yeah. it was like that mix. And uh, everyone I left Ozzy it. out, but yeah, Ozzy's there too. It's interesting because what we do on this podcast, you know, I'm 34, Mickey, 34. You're... We're the same age. We were right? eighty-three babies. Oh, that's we are eighty-three babies. Uh, so we, you know, we grew up post uh, Guns N' Roses, you know, breaking up. Uh, but they're obviously my favorite band. Doing a podcast about them. Uh, obviously, there are people much older than me who grew up from watching them start as a band. We've interviewed people who were. Uh, I interviewed uh, Desi Benjamin, who was a, uh, a roadie for uh, for your dad, London. The first four shows ever. And so I'm, oh wow! Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, actually. he has um like a mini documentary about that timeline. He was at the very first Jane's Addiction show. Oh, cool. So I mean, we, we try to get a timeline, and it's very interesting. You know, what bracket you're in as far as life and your age group, and how you see this band. Uh, so I don't, I guess I want to ask before I get to to London, Nico. I want to ask you know since you weren't in, you're not part of the, the family. I mean, you're a part of the family, but not like. In the, blood in the gene pool in the, in yeah, the right. gene pool so what was it like to know or to say hey my friend's dad is slash or this record that i'm listening to is my friend's dad that's uh, you know my friend's dads yeah. are dentists or uh, uh, accountants you know so it's <laughs> is that is that weird or you always knew him as like hey no this is just uh mr hudson or whatever you call him yeah i always well i, I knew him before I, you know, discovered, like, GNR. But, like, sometimes it, it would sink in. I'm like, whoa, I'm listening to, like, that guy who just saw a rehearsal, you know? It's like, but other, but I don't really think about it, you know? It's just, <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's a really nice guy, you know? Like, it's like, he's just a good person. You kind of forget that he's, like, this, you know, Legendary beast on stage dude. and, like, right, you yeah, know? It's he's like, just a good dude. He loves music like you. Yeah. Then London, I mean, this, I don't even know if you can answer it. Because obviously it's your dad. Was there ever a time yeah. where it, it clicked for you that say, "Look at what my dad's done." You know, this is what, what my how people view him. All the, but to you, he's, you know, I'm sure you've seen him take out the trash. You know, he's probably changed your dirty diapers back in the day. Sorry to embarrass you, but, yeah. uh, but I mean, did it ever occur to you that you know he means something to other people? Or does that matter? Yeah, 
like since I was little, especially with the Velvet Revolver stuff, when I would, cause I was the most I toured with him was definitely for the Velvet Revolver stuff, you know, and seeing that many people uh, at those shows is just kind of crazy, and how they all just worship, and then going on the on the last GNR tour and seeing all those people who still like them for much older stuff. That the, the GNR was probably what what clicked the most going on that tour. Uh, but it never really like hit me until this summer where I was like, I don't want to live in a shadow when I when I started playing in the band, and like that's the main reason I don't play guitar or stringed instruments. I was gonna yeah, okay. like I said, I was gonna ask that. So yeah. that's uh that's an interesting choice. So when did you decide? to play drums or did your dad try to imp- was he okay with that did he try like buy you you know your first guitar and you're like no i want to do drums or you try guitar what was that process like uh it, it was years back i think for me it was around fifth sixth grade and i i played bass and i played bass for like a year then and i was just getting sick of it and just bored and i wanted to do something different so I, I think I was at guitar at guitar center with my dad, and then I just started playing on the drum kit. I really liked it. Uh, I got a drum teacher, and no one really stopped it at all. They just supported it. It was either I uh, growing up, I either had to play a sport or played music, and I did both. But then music was just what it was, and then drums was what took it to another level. What did you play? Because I know uh, your dad was a BMXer. Oh, I, I used to uh, skateboard and. That I used to like compete, uh, and I still do skate. But you played flag football. Yeah, I played football. I played tackle football. I played soccer. I played hockey, basketball. Hockey, nice. Sorry. I played everything. You're speaking my language with hockey. I'm currently um, dabbed in. Yeah, you are. You're I'm like, like the, an all Islanders. You're like the Islanders uh, representative over here. I'm dressed like a ten year old right now with just like my, all my Islander <laughs> winter gear. On it's, Christmas, man, it looks like you just opened up all your gifts and they were all Islanders. And yet I'm Jewish, things. so figure that one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, I, I have somewhat of a uh, ADD. So sorry, uh, London Nico. So that's that's fascinating. Then I want to know, uh, Nico. Then how did you? When did you pick up guitar? Then joining a band, basically, you know, because obviously London and I, and I totally respect that. There's every junior or a sibling or it's it's always a unique path when they have a famous relative or whatever it, it is. Yeah. Uh, but when you're in a band with someone like that, uh, who's making his own name for himself, and by the way, London Hudson is a cool ass name anyway. You don't need to have. Thank you. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, I agree. That is a great name. You don't need to change it to uh, the semicolon or. Or backslash or anything like that. That's a, <laughs> that's a cool enough name. But uh, so then, so Nico. I guess the question I'm trying to get out is: It's like, okay, you know who Slash is now. You know that they have more songs than Welcome yeah. to the Jungle. Uh, but now you're in his son's band, and he um, he's there with uh, rehearsing with you. Do you feel right. any added pressure and be like, wow, this guy's watching me? This do you feel like you have to reach a certain? I got to be like Slash for or Eddie Van Halen or any or you are you yeah. just yourself because you're so still so young you're still finding yourself. We all are anyway, yeah. myself included. No, that's true. It's a it's a really good motivation. Like you know, I'm really it's it does it's not like pressure that's stressful. Like oh, I don't know if I could do it. You know, it's like I can I have all the power to make myself like you know I just I want my own like my own sound. You know, and I'd want to kind of you know i i want to progress you know so having him there like watching is like a good thing like okay people care like i'm Hmm. seeing results from like what i'm doing so it just keeps me moving forward you know do you you have any uh specific guitar players that you look um at as like influences in your playing like you kind of stylize yourself after because you just like how they play or how they sound yeah um right now i I really sound like Slash. <laughs> not, a, not a bad That's thing. That's a good answer, yeah. It's not a bad thing at all, you know. As, you know, I've kind of realized, like, finding my own whatever sound is going to take a long-ass time. But, you know, right now I, I sound a lot like Slash and, like, um, I don't know, like, Joe Perry or, like, Jimmy Page or something. It's very that kind of, like, rock and roll. It's like that bluesy rock and roll. Right. Yeah, through the decades. Which is what I think is missing. Richards probably in there. 
But um, no, is there any specific uh, Guns N' Roses song that you learned to play your instrument after? Uh, for me, um, like my first guitar solo full song that I ever learned was Don't Cry and uh, Patience. Uh, okay. So like, and then I learned a bunch of other Guns N' Roses songs going forward to teach myself as well. So is there anything that in that catalog that you were kind of, or any Slash song, you know, from his other stuff? Yeah. I think the first one like that I really enjoyed learning was Night Train. Okay, cool. Like, I didn't even, like, the song, I didn't realize, that, like, how complicated and good, like, the songwriting was and everything, and, like, that kind of blew my mind, so. Yeah, for me, too. And after that, I learned the whole album, you know. Yep, that's like, what I did. <laughs> my guitar teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I did the same thing, yeah. Then, uh, then kind of the same question to you, London. Who do you model yourself uh, or, or kind of emulate or look up to as far as drummers? Because I did see you uh, on your Instagram, again, rocking out with, uh, with Steven Adler. I mean, that's so cool. Adler is definitely one of them. He's great. Uh, I, I love him. Uh, Roger Taylor from Queen. Uh, Vinnie Paul is definitely one of our favorite drummers from yeah. Pantera. Phil Rudd is just a metronome. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Who just don't be like his personal life and, you know, threaten to kill people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you, do you guys just, um, I guess it's more towards to, to London, uh, when you're playing drums and you're practicing stuff, do you just do you, do you have like famous people just come over, like famous musicians just come over and give you tips? Like, does Matt Sorum just sit down and say, "Hey, let, you know, let me show you, you could be mine" or something like that? No, not Sorum. Sorum's yeah. never actually been to one of our rehearsals. Okay, but I've been hanging out with him recently. He's cool. Uh, but mainly, my dad Adler did it last week. Uh, Nico's dad, who's a drummer. Okay. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Mainly, like, when people watch me play, they don't really give me tips besides, like, just stuff that I miss out. And mainly, just, like, it's not really celebrities uh, for people. Yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if Mickey's idea, I mean, I can't imagine. Slash isn't waking up in his uh, bathrobe, still wearing the top hat, <laughs> and there's just, like, you know, yeah. rock stars, like, in and out of the the bathroom and the guest house. Your house isn't like... I mean, that would be pretty cool if it was, but you, you have to have a pretty normal home life, do you? I, I, I guess I do. I mean, normal for me. <laughs> Fair enough. Normal for you. <laughs> uh, it hasn't really slowed down or sped up, but... Well, I was on your, um, not to be a, a complete stalker, but I'd like to say that this is, uh, it's called show prep as opposed to stalking. But uh, London, you haven't been active on your Twitter. I, I, maybe, it might have been your mom that was using it based on the way the, the tweets were written. So I'm looking at these. No, I, I don't have one. That's, that's like a fake. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. well, I, don't, I, don't, I only have Instagram. Okay, good to know because uh, it hasn't yeah. been active and, in a couple of years and it was all nice stuff like family photos, like nothing in a problem. Oh, really? Because there was uh, yeah. of you when you know your younger brother Cash, uh, out you know petting a tiger, if you remember, if you oh. yeah. So I was like, oh okay. So that <laughs> seems pretty normal uh, to me, I guess. Just going out and petting tigers. Somebody's following him, putting <laughs> stuff on Twitter. Yeah. I, guess. I think I remember that. I think that, that was it. It was was it in a hotel room? No, it was the that tiger. Photo. No, it was that yeah. was, you were in like a um, I don't know. It was like a petting zoo. It was uh, you, your okay. mom, and your dad. Uh, so Slash did not have any hat on at all? Just tied uh, yeah, that, that was Africa. That was an Africa trip. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right. Yeah, but later later we got one of the tigers in the hotel room, and that's where it really took off. Oh, man, that sounds like, like a party, dude. It sounds like the plot of The Hangover. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it, was like a, it was a little baby one, so not as bad. Oh. And, we didn't have to knock, and we didn't have to knock it out. <laughs> it wasn't like Mike Tyson. Yeah, and it was not Mike Tyson. Okay, and Nico didn't wake up with a face tattoo? <laughs> he did, but that was a different time. Okay. <laughs> like so uh, who are the other guys in the band? Because, again, I was watching, because uh, you are on Instagram, it's Classless Act. Uh, to Instagram, yeah. watching uh, you jam out uh, yesterday. Um, yeah. I'm saying I, I want you to put up more videos. I went to go show Mickey today, but I missed out. Um, I guess like Snapchat and the way things work, things just dissipate. Uh, so who are the other guys, and where did you find them? Um, we have we have our bass player Hunter Kubot, and then our rhythm guitar player's name is Dane Piper. Mm -hmm. And um, Hunter, I was friends with at school, so. Um, you know, we were friends for la like my freshman year, and uh, we never really like talked because I was like 
I was trying to get with one of his friends. <laughs> and then this year, you know, the, this year we started talking, like he wanted to do a talent show and we started talking about Earth, Wind and Fire and we did the worst talent show ever on a cover of Earth, Wind and Fire song. What song? Um, Africano Power. Oh. It's on their live album. Amazing. I, I, I love Earth, Wind and Fire. Yeah, that's that's, that's awesome. amazing. So that's I, it's great. really cool that's to hear awesome. you say that. Yeah. Yeah, really great. And then Dane, actually a fan, sent us a video, sent us a bunch of videos of him playing. And his whole Instagram is just him playing songs, you know, and playing all, it's all rhythm. Playing rhythm, stuff. yeah. Huh? So, you know, we saw him and we saw, him, like, his location was, like, Santa Monica or something. And so we sent him a message. We found out he goes to USC and, and he came up to one of the rehearsals and it just worked, like, really well. Yeah. Where did, the, awesome. where did the, uh, the name Classless Act come from? Uh, that I was walking around at school and I was thinking about, I was just like on my train of thought and I thought about Donald Trump <laughs> and someone called him a classless act. I think it was for the, for him talking about like grab her by the pussy or whatever. <laughs> sure. And I just, I just thought it was a fun, I just thought it was a cool, like fun name. I'm like, uh, and I texted it to London and it, he liked it. So, you know, we just kind of stuck with that. I yeah. like it. A Trump inspired. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, totally. It wasn't overthought. Just went with it, felt right. Go with it. That's one of the things we also yeah, talk about I... on uh, this podcast. We, do, I mean, you can't help but with the politics and, uh, you know, Axel's been pretty vocal. Uh, Del James has been vocal. Uh, I, you know, the fact that I thought it was a trip that they brought out the uh, Donald Trump pinata in the Mexico City um, yeah. Show so I mean that's that's yeah. really that's cool I like that it was a cool name I'm like okay maybe they're 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 students it's it's a it's a cool phrase but the the root behind that name I appreciate it really so I'm glad I asked that yeah. <laughs> yeah. so what are you looking for in a in a singer that has to be like do have you had any conversations London and uh, with I mean, you had to have with with your dad. Yeah, that seems to be yeah, the big thing, voice? the lead singer that you need. Because obviously, your dad with Axel, your dad with Scott. Yeah, I mean, he's worked with everyone from Lemmy to Adam Levine. I Miles mean, Kennedy. I, I mean, he might be the the perfect one to ask and to give advice on what to look for and what to avoid. Yeah. So, with him, it, it, we we kind of always like come to the same agreement when we talk about it, the same themes. It, it's. We're looking for somebody who doesn't lack stage presence, but doesn't have too much, like, is crazy. Because that's what a lot of, like, kids are, that's what's happening these days, at least with, like, with new, like, kid metal bands that play, like, local shows out here, or rock bands. It's just noise with some kid jumping around on stage and breaking shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is just way too much. But for uh, as for like people that we would like them to sound like if they didn't already have their own cool sound, uh, what comes up for me and Nico a lot is someone along the lines of Bon Scott or Lemmy Kravitz. Oh, interesting. Yeah, right on, man. But it, we we have ideas for a singer or plots. Plots, yeah, that's a good. Yeah, plots. Um. <laughs> have, you, have you tried anyone out yet, or is this? Are you still are you the, just talking about the or? preliminary phases? Yeah, yeah we we've tried two. It how, didn't really. Yeah, how those out. go? Not really well. Yeah, because uh, they we, were. It's it's all it, it that the incident was with that <laughs> was. Uh, they those those kids. Who are you shushing? Kids. Who are you shushing? Uh, no, it was just Nico laughing. Oh, he... <laughs> <laughs> you can laugh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, those kids, they, they just want to be in the band, really. They don't mm, want yeah. They don't want to put in the work. Oh, yeah, you can't have that. I mean, it's the same thing I, you know, in radio, when, in doing different shows. I mean, people who just want to be there... No, you got to have yeah. the same drive, the same passion, the same goals. And there's a maturity level that's maturity. definitely required to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've had yeah, my experience, man. Like just auditioning members for any part of the band, and it's a god awful experience. Their uh, Mickey's band, Midnight Mob, has like a Spinal Tap thing with drummers. Yeah, they just keep disappearing <laughs> in various ways and reappearing and then disappearing, and it's pretty awful. One of my first, before uh, doing the band Midnight Mob, one of my first experiences in auditioning drummers before getting to that, uh, to that band, 
was there was this girl who um, I found. So back in the day, what you would do is you'd I put up flyers like in record stores or like at um, yeah. music stores mm-hmm. and stuff like that, or just talk to people. Uh, so it was really not internet based. It was just more of just flyer, right. flyer, flyer. So you get random weird calls from like people. So one of these calls yeah. was this girl, and she's like, I drum. I was like, okay, that's cool. So she's like, let's hang out so we get to know each other. And I was like, all right. So that was kind of normal because, you know, being in a band, you got it's a relationship. It's a family thing. Uh, so yeah. we hung out a couple times, whatever, and I'm like, I still haven't heard her play drums. What's going on here? It's like, it's kind of weird. And she was kind of coming on to me, too. A bunch. That's what it sounds like. So it sounds like yeah. a Tinder date. Yeah, it's, oh, it's very, very, it's bad sh- sign. very, very strange. Bad yeah. So then one, one like day. I anything's wrong with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then one day I was like, I was like, all right, listen, I'm picking you up right now and we're going to a studio. I got to know if you play the drums. So I bring her to the studio and, um. It was me and my buddy, uh, my buddy Lips, who's the, who's, who's the singer, and she gets behind the st- she gets behind the kit in the, st- in, the, in the studio, and we uh, we're like, okay, so what do you need? You know, we have like this type of hi hat. You know, you know, we'll just grab it from the back. And she's like, no, I don't need any of that. And that's so I look at Lips, and I'm like, oh, what the hell is this all about? And um, so like, screw it, whatever. So we just start playing, and then she's just banging on these these. She doesn't know what the hell she's doing. She doesn't play the drums. Oh, man. We turn around, she's topless. <laughs> yeah, with her, her, the, her like boobs flapping out and everything, like f- blowing cameras all over the room because nobody, you know, the owner doesn't want the, the shit stolen. So, so she's just doing her thing, and then her her friend was like. I don't know. He just took some pills on the couch or something, <laughs> and then before I knew it, we were just dropping everyone off at at her house, and it was like a big disaster. Um, oh wow! Yeah, oh. it was like, and it's just that's like one of many experiences auditioning strangers. So good luck. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's quite you. it's quite the process. Uh, yeah. But um, you know, it's the first step, though. You gotta put yourself out there and get the word out and get people in and hear them out and just be patient, and you'll find that person for sure. Yeah. Now we have many like. We have so many requests from people living in like I don't know, like Chile and Hungary and oh, like wow. like that's a community. Like, oh, we'll, I'll I'll sing for you. It's like you don't know how to speak English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you never know. I mean Journey found their their new singer on YouTube from the Philippines. Yeah, it's English yeah. requirement. Yeah, Arnel Pineda. Uh, you know what? You mentioned something I wanted to. Br- uh, I'm glad you did because I wanted to talk about it because you guys are. You know, in high school, you know, you're playing bluesy rock, you're developing this band, and something that, you know, another topic we talk about on this podcast is just the role of rock and, the role of rock and roll now. It's not the same when Guns N' Roses was out. You know, so not at all. you said many of the bands you see now are just idiots running around making noise. There are very few yeah. actual musicians, and when I see you guys and I hear you guys, you know, you are actual musicians, which is so rare. And the fact that you're 15 and, you know, and I get and I respect uh, London's view of like, you don't want to be in your dad's shadow. You're your own person. I totally get that. But you have a name there somewhat, whether you want to yeah. like it or not. So there is potential there for it to do something, to be something, to help rock and roll. So what's the the scene like, I guess, of, you yeah, know, of, of your of, peers? Of, yeah, of your peers. Exactly. For for me, really, none of my friends like are like crazy into rock. They they listen to like, trap. They, yeah, they all listen to like SoundCloud rap. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. that made me sad. Yeah, or <laughs> and if they do listen to rock, like it will be like just songs that everybody knows, like Welcome to the Jungle or yeah. really anything off Back in Black. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So it's not real rock fans. I mean, rock has kind of been pushed to, like, the sidelines, of, like, musically, you know. Now I hear, like, new rock stations, and they're playing, like, rock, rock, you know, in quotations, with drum machines, yeah. auto-tune, right. and, like, like, what the fuck is this? And it's, it's like... <laughs> It's the worst thing ever, you know? It's like <laughs> So why do you think so that is? Not, That's yeah. how I look. I'm like, I don't want to be that old guy and be like, you know, music's not like the way it used to be. And I don't want to be like the old man <laughs> shaking, shanking uh, his fist angrily at the at the cloud. You know, but you guys are saying that and you are in that, you know, age group. Why do you think that is? Why are, why are your peers listening to such shitty music, London and Nico? That's <laughs> what I want to know. I would say for for the rap, it's the image of like whatever being like hard or 
being gangster and the money and the weird party drugs and I don't, I don't get yeah. it. Yeah. The media really is like kind of like, I think shoving that image down people's throat, you know, and it's like now kids look up to, instead of looking up to musicians, they're looking up to these like talentless hacks, you know, it's like, so they don't end up being musicians and you don't have, you know, rock bands. And the kids that do like rock are usually like, you know, like industrial rock or 90s or whatever, you know, so. I couldn't agree more, and I'm, I'm glad. It makes me feel comfort in my heart to hear you say that. Because, again, I don't want to be, yeah. you know, uh, I don't have, my, my beard is still predominantly black. I don't have, t- like, a ton of gray hairs <laughs> in my beard yet. Uh, Looks good. Thank you. But I, 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 always, I, I, do, I want to still be hip to what the kids are into. I have three younger brothers. Uh, the youngest is 21, so it's not, you know, quite your age. That's, like, kind of still in the ballpark. It's yeah, in the ballpark, and, yeah. you know, I, I try to talk to him about it because I still – I want to be hip. I want to be with it. It's a mystery. You know, or what am I missing <laughs> out? Because it's like I, I've loved Slash my entire life, and, you know, well, his music. Don't worry, uh, London. I'm not going to show up at your house with, like – like say anything, you know, like uh, a pinata. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to work. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, but it's like there hasn't been another guitarist that's made that you know the hairs in the back of my neck stand up. You know why it is? Yeah. So where is that? But again, listening to you guys and just from that one Instagram uh, clip, you know, I could see where it's going and hear where it's going, and it's like I'm so glad that there are still young bands out there. And hopefully, you know, and I think you guys will make noise. I don't see why not once you get the the right singer. Yeah, oh, for sure. No, it's coming back, you know. Like, have you heard um, Greta Van Fleet? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like, and those kids are all Zeppelin. like 18, 21, and it's like, you know, they're they're getting traction, you know. So, it's like there's a type, of, people want like actual instrument music, you know, like yeah. instrument rock. You know, yeah, it so. gets oversaturated after a while just hearing drum beats and machines and make sounds. Because and, it's yeah, real. Big, Disney, yeah. Disney girls singing into because microphones. Because it, it's real music, whether yeah. it's, you know, Guns N' Roses, whether, you know, when it was the straight up rock and roll or when it was uh, User Illusions with the orchestra or, you know, Nico, your favorite band, ACDC. Yeah, they, you know, a lot of the songs sound the same, but it's, they're fucking good at all their instruments. They can yeah, do exactly. anything they want. You know, they just choose to be ACDC. So, like, where are those bands? So it's just so cool to hear that not only are you influenced by, you're creating the sound and you're young enough to make some damage. That's what this world, yeah. the rock and roll world needs. It needs some damage. Yeah, I was actually curious. That's when you really- said um, media before, uh, I know you mentioned SoundCloud. But where, what else do you guys listen to to find new music? Is it, is it streaming services? Is it just satellite radio? That's a good question. Like, what is it around you, at least, that that helps you find new bands? Hmm. I know. I know. Nico goes to a lot of shows too that he sees all. Yeah, like like local shows, like underage shows, you know, that kids do, and, and also satellite radio and stuff. Um, yeah, but at these local shows or whatever, it's like in the valley in, in LA. There's a lot of like, it's either indie rock or like. Well, indie. It's not even rock. It's 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 either indie music, like little like G chord, C chord, you know, whatever. Right. Or there's, um, or there's just like metal music that just sounds like noise or punk. Okay. You know, and there, but there's, there's nothing in between. There's no like rock or any type of thing. So it's like you you can kind of see from there. It's like what people are listening to. Okay. And um satellite radio and word of mouth and everything you know there's no real rocker kids that listen to actual rock music that's what i was getting at i was wondering you know are they long gone the rocker kids and i mean you guys are i mean are thankfully still there where are you calling from by the way are you guys in la right now yeah yeah we're just in in my house just relaxing in the house well i like to set the scene i like so like it's like we're all hanging out together um, I guess goes to both of you, uh, you, because of course, again, it's a Guns N' Roses podcast, and it just might be, could be an interesting uh, response. Is when the first time either of you saw uh, Guns N' Roses? Obviously, I, I'm assuming it had to be on this reunion tour, or, or I don't know if either of you went to any of, you know, when uh, London, when your dad was not in the band. I don't know if you went any to those shows. So was the reunion 
the first opportunity you got to see your dad with Axl Rose? Yeah, my first, I didn't go to the Troubadour shows, but uh, I, I, the first time I saw them was Coachella, I think. Okay. Yeah, it had to be Coachella. And that was when Axel was still in the boot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was still an amazing show. So, and it was, it was really cool to see, like, I don't know, my dad was old. His old guy. Yeah. <laughs> what other uh, concerts actually have you been to outside Guns N' Roses that like you look for when that band comes through the area that you want to go see them? Airborne. Oh, okay, cool. Airborne. Yeah, yeah we saw Airborne once, and I like fell. I completely fell in love with them, and they're one of my favorite bands. Yeah. Like, Airborne. I saw. I saw. I saw Motorhead at Coachella. Mm. Yeah, I saw them a few, few times. Ago. Cool. Yeah. I wanted to see them once. We just saw Jane's Addiction. Yeah, we did. Yeah, they were actually badass. I I thought I I thought I hated them, but you know, they're, <laughs> they're really good. Yeah, I saw them that one time in 2014 at the CBGB Festival, but uh, oh, that's cool. That was it. But they're they're great. What about uh, Dude. wait, Nico? Have you seen GNR at all? Yeah, actually, the well, I've seen them. I think four times, four times now. Um, uh, and the first time I saw them was at. Las Vegas, T-Mobile Arena. T-Mobile Arena, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think April or something. And that was an Axel was in the chair, and I was just, like, blown up. Because up until then, I'd been listening to, like, Appetite and everything, and hearing those songs live just, like, blew my fucking mind. I'm like, <laughs> you know. It was so, the same thing. I, I, can, I can't even imagine. Then what about, uh, were you friends with uh, London during the Velvet Days as well, or no? Um, yeah, actually. Yeah, we were really young when you are hanging out. So then you were you too young to go to any of those shows because I was fortunate enough to, uh, I mean those I mean that's why like your dad could be in uh, London could be in any band, and I'm like I'm just drawn to it. Uh, I saw them in Jersey and it was incredible, and then I went down to West Palm Beach after college and it was incredible. Uh, so I'm just curious if you do, were you do you have any remembrance of of that band or his experiences then, that or your experiences I should say uh, seeing your dad play. I- yeah, I, I remember I would I would go to the Velvet Revolver shows and those were like my early like childhood photos on the bus with my dad, like when I was still a little kid. A little kid and I had a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> I really pulled off I really pulled off the mullet. Yeah. And uh I, I remember I I would go to the shows really just to hang out when I was little with my mom and then watch like the first two songs and then go back to the dressing room and fall asleep. Aww. That's what I remember doing when I was little for those shows. <laughs> That's so cool. Like, that is cool. That's a on great my memory. Little Nintendo on my DS. Nice. And then just playing like little video games. Yeah. See, uh, <laughs> my dad was a dentist, and I just felt cool. I'm like, oh, I get to use the employee bathroom. Right. Oh, I get all this dental floss <laughs> for free. <laughs> oh, look floss. at me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, your mullet was pretty good, London, but I believe it was uh, your younger brother, Cash, who had the sick uh, fedora in the photo yeah. of you guys when uh, in the when your dad got the, the walk of fame, the, the star. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I like with your, your mohawk. It- I had a, I had a really he had a really cool mohawk. I've done a lot of hair. Yeah, I had green hair. I've had red hair. But That's no hat. Different. You can't do a hat though, right? No. No, I used <laughs> to wear I used to wear like five panel hats in my skater phase. <laughs> but. Yeah, that, that's really it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't wear a top hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can answer, have you noticed a, a difference in you know in mood in perhaps uh, your like your dad or or no? Uh, not well. Yeah, he, he a lot. It, he seems really excited to play. Like that, he's just able to do what he loves with the guys that he loves. So it, it's cool because a lot of the Velvet Revolver stuff, I don't remember how he was like just acting. But you could tell he's excited every show, and he's all, he's nervous before every show to play. <laughs> Isn't that yeah? Something? And he, crazy, he, yeah. he does his like his his like twenty minutes of like solitude before the shows. You know. So chill. then, did you both uh, both London and Nico? Do you when you go to these shows, and you of course you have access? Do you watch as a fan and just enjoy and kind of just forget that you're also musicians and you're starting this band? Or do you watch and learn and say, oh, how are they handling it? How do they pr- prepare for the show? Uh, do you take mental notes? To watch and learn. 
watch and learn yeah for like stage <laughs> presence and stuff yeah, yeah. what you start Definitely. playing in a band and playing with each other and then you see concerts in a whole different way it's pretty weird yeah yeah you start getting analytical with seeing bands live and stuff it's strange and it, it's, yeah. it's even like that with listening to bands too yep. Yep. yeah yeah and i always, like every time you watch them i'm trying to see if like what he's playing and everything i'm like oh, i'm gonna I'm try that lick next <laughs> you know yep so. amazing uh, you know, then the last question I'm going to have for you guys. Can I have uh, one question before oh, that? Oh, absolutely. Last question? You may, you may right. my dear Mickey. Cool. Yeah, so, all right, so um, do you guys have a favorite album of all the Slash material? Uh, is there anything that you're completely, like, this is the one I absolutely love over all the other ones? Hmm. I want to say Appetite. Okay. But I do, like... The conspirator stuff, the world on fire, world on fire. Yeah, contraband's pretty cool too of an album. Yeah, contra contraband is a good album. I'm sure I love that. It is. It's yeah. just not talk about snake pit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Because I was actually, I was only gonna mention that I am a fan of both snake pit records. And yeah, I actually I do like a lot of a lot of the riffs in Snake Pit. I'm like, holy shit, that's like really cool. I I really do like that stuff. It's funny. I'm looking at the same snare that the drummer does. Really? The, yeah, this is the, that whole pork pie kit is what they use for uh, snake pit. Okay, I'll ask one quick question then the last one, because uh, I want I know Nico, your your dad's hanging out. Was he in a band? I want I want to give some Chris some love. I want to give. Uh, was, I know he's All a drummer. Right. Was uh, is, is he also? Does he rock out with London? What's uh, you know? Does he play T Rex songs? Uh, I'll, I'll let him answer this. Question. Oh sh- sure. <laughs> well, um, I, I actually play guitar. Uh, my dad was a drummer back in the days, and he he was a professional musician, and we grew up in Greece, so... Uh, I knew it was a Greek last I, name. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, basically, I started playing guitar uh, not, th- not that long ago, maybe about four years ago, because before that, I was playing saxophone and piano and all kinds of different stuff. Always wanted to do music, but never had a really chance to do it, but uh, I wanted to get Nico into music, and I, I didn't know how to do it, so... I ended up taking lessons from this guy that was a guitarist from uh, Warrant. His name is Rick Steyer, and he showed me all this cool stuff. So I started bringing Nico to the rehearsals to uh, pr- uh, just guitar practice. And that's how Nico got into guitar. And sure enough, it, he took off to the point where I'm like, well, I can't solo like that. And, <laughs> and they just took off on their own. I mean, we just did a lot of songwriting and just kind of show them how to be a band, you know, and work with each other and cues and everything. And Slash would come in and help us out on how to do a lot of the things too, uh, on how to be a band. Cause I didn't know what I was doing exactly. And I still don't. So I'm always in communication with Slash. I'm like, Hey, what do I do here? What should I do? You know, uh, as far as correct actions on pushing the band towards the right direction. So, then, yeah. then if which is awesome, and it's so cool, everything's falling into place, you know. And you had like, how do I start a band? And next thing you know, your son's playing guitar in, you know, with Slash, you know, essentially. So mm-hmm. I mean, that's such a a, a blessing, really. And it's just so cool that that's uh, happening for you. Then it's just kudos to, you know, obviously London and Nico, you guys doing it. I mean, I, I don't know how many interview views you've done. I know this could be scary. There are a lot of you know, bad people out there who are just after a, a quote or, you know, just they're not out to just have a good broadcast. They're just out for themselves. Clickbait. I, you know, I'm not about that at all. So I appreciate you guys willing to come on. Chris, your response, uh, you know, getting back to me so quickly. And obviously to Slash and, uh, you know, London, your mom, Perla, for, you know, supporting this and, and doing this. And uh, it, it, it means a lot uh, that you guys came on. And. Uh, the only last question I'll have, like, what are your future goals other than to find a lead singer? You know, what would you like this band to become, to be? You know, do you have a a mission statement for Classless Act? That was my question. Too bad. Make <laughs> kick-ass songs and play yeah. some fucking awesome shows. Yeah. You know, like, we want to be as influential in the future as we are as, like, bands like Led Zeppelin and and, you know, Deep Purple and all these, like, rock bands that have stayed like stayed their ground you know and they still influence bands to the day you know that's what we that's where we want to be you know we want to be a part of the a part of the story 
somewhere. Th- that's yeah. the best answer because I keep saying in all the, the the shit music that we're talking about, the SoundCloud rappers, these are all bands with an expiration date. That exactly. You're yeah. not going to hear about them in in five years, in a month. Years. You know, it's like it's just that we we want to make our own kind of journey and story. I, I yeah, think you're well on your way. Yeah, just bring back the rock that we like. <laughs> I like it. It's it will, a good mission statement. Well, you guys are awesome dudes. Uh, you are welcome back anytime if you just want to talk about... You know what? Let me ask this. London, are you into uh, horror like your dad? Mm, not really. That's more my little brother. Okay. My little brother is into horror, but we're all like crazy in the movies. Does he... Yeah. Um, how old is Cash, if I don't you mind me asking? He's 13. Is he playing an 13. instrument yet or no? He, he used to play keyboard a lot when he was little, and, like, he could still dabble around on that, and, like, he just messed around on, like, my drum kits at home. That's cool. And, yeah, he played, he actually, at one of rehearsals, he played with my dad and Nico. Yeah, we had, I think, uh, that video, yeah, that video is somewhere. Okay. That's very cool. Well, if your dad ever wants to come on and talk about horror movies or whatever, you can extend my invitation, but, uh, again, to you guys... <laughs> Whenever you want, whether it's talking about giving me an update on uh, Classless Act, you are always welcome back. Same to, uh, to you, uh, Chris. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for, for taking the time. And uh, if you're ever in New York, please, by all means, come down to the studio. We're in Tribeca, the same building oh, as, sure. as Q104 and uh, KTU and some of the big NYC stations. I'm very lucky to work here and to be able to have a podcast on the app and, you know, uh, talk to, to guys like you and, and, to, and to make this happen. Uh, so it's yeah, Classless yeah. Act just on Instagram and classlessact.com, right? You just put up the website? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're selling t shirts. Um, we can only ship in the U.S. So right now at $26 because that includes shipping price. All right. So I, I'm going to have to order myself because I'm only in New York. That's not overseas. Uh, so thank I'm, you. I'm going to have to order myself a Classless Act. Now that I know it's about Trump, I definitely have to. <laughs> secret campaign. Yeah, oh, Brendan, uh, Chris here. Um, I wanted to just make sure that, to let you know that you're actually the first interview that the guys have done, the f- first official interview. So you get the uh, kudos yeah. for that, you know. <laughs> well, I was afraid to ask that because I wasn't sure, and I Googled. I'm um, like, because you mentioned like they haven't done many. I'm like, I'm Googling like London's uh, Hudson yeah. interview, Nico interview, you know, and nothing. I'm like, am I really like, I can't right. be. I, I, I can't be. How does like, no one reach out to these these kids? Or sorry, <laughs> like these guys, these dudes. But uh, that's that means a lot to me that you said yes. And uh, I hope it was it was fun for uh, all involved because I know it was for me. No, it was. It's really cool. I was kind of nervous at first, but like this is a really cool experience. Awesome. Yeah. Interview, I try to do it to, like we're just hanging out. I don't want to just like question answer question answer. I don't want to beat you to yeah. death with questions about your dad. You know, it's about you. It's about the band. You know, of course, you know where there is a uh, you know overlap and get some cool slash or Guns N' Roses stories. Great, but I want to find out about you. I want you to succeed. I want you know, and I just appreciate you guys coming on and giving me the content because you know I want to succeed in what I do, but I want to do it the yeah, right way, yeah. just like you want to do it the right way. So. Um, invitations always open over the phone, in person, uh, whatever I can do. I, not like I, I can't say. What can I say to the son of a slash? How, however, I can help you. I'm sure I can't really help you that much. But, <laughs> but if there's something I can do, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Of course, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, one last question. What do you have uh, in the future other than looking for a lead singer? What do you have on the docket? Um, we have uh, about 14 songs originals yeah that are or, that are done just some waiting for lyrics and very soon we're hoping we're really hoping to play the download festival in italy well it's next year that's next year but I don't know. We got maybe we'll see if that happens but that's so, our that's our, our little goal right now i hope that happens because obviously that's guns, awesome because guns and roses <laughs> is playing of course and so are yeah. the, the uh the pink slips which is uh, yeah, exactly. Duff's daughter's band. And if they could open for, for GNR, we could too. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, I've reached out to uh, the Pink Slips to interview them as well. I haven't heard back, so uh, not yet, but you guys were super quick, which is just amazing. I got, a, I got a quick yeah, question. Man. 
Just to, yes. I gotta quit. These guys gotta go. They gotta. <laughs> I gotta got throw it in there. They gotta be rock All right, stars. You said four, fourteen songs. So I'm curious in this new model of music and how things are played out these days on Spotify and all these things. Are you looking to put out a full album, or are you looking to put out an EP, or are you looking to do a single and then roll for with a couple months? Because I know uh, with a lot of like the Slash albums I've seen coming out, he's 14, 15 songs. But then I know a lot of the younger bands coming out, they're throwing one song out there for a while or three songs oh yeah like yeah. four songs on an ep or, we, right. we want to do a full album okay yeah we're trying to get a full album out there and you know you guys are going to bring rock back to where it was you've never tried on a pair of your dad's leather pants have you london <laughs> i figured i end in a really weird question yeah i have and, uh... <laughs> okay it's honest <laughs> i hope they were clean. <laughs> all right i want to ask it i want to ask if they were clean or anything. unwashed unwashed <laughs> yeah, they're, they're... live in the moment <laughs> oh that, that's amazing that's it's a, from the 80s. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You guys are, are, are too cool. And, and, no, Chris, uh, thank you for the email. I got the uh, the picture. So uh, very cool to see you guys somewhat in the flesh. I'm very jealous of, uh, well, both of your hair, but especially Nico's. I finally <laughs> I finally had to shave mine. I was doing the Axel Rosenberg thing for a while. Uh, <laughs> Get it? Because it's Jewish, too. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> thank you, guys. and Enjoy the rest of your, your Sunday. I don't know what you guys have planned. Uh, now the football's over. But London, Nico, Chris, thank you. And Happy New Year. Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Best of luck. Uh, I'm sure you'll get everything. You know, you put your mind. You guys sound so um, passionate about what you're doing. I'm sure you'll get it. Next time we talk to them, they're going to be too big for us. They're going to be too big. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank, you so, thank you guys so much for having us. Anytime. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. So that was cool as fuck. Yeah, it was really cool. I mean... I can't believe, and just like with the CKY thing that uh, Scotto and I did, that that was the first interview about Guns N' Roses he's ever done. Yeah, uh, you were number one, man. I, it's just, I mean, it's not like I'm, I'm Howard Stern and I'm this big name, but I mean, I'm noticing, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, I mentioned on the show, like different countries that reach out, different people. Uh, you know, I also really appreciate of different podcasts that that reach out and and spread that podcast love. It's all networking, and I guess people are, are seeing what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do here. I mean, this is just a, a positive environment to talk about a really cool band, and I'm lucky that I have a lot of radio experience to try to build a good radio show. You know, I don't want to just be like, yeah, Guns N' Roses, rock and roll all the time. There's got to be more to it. Yeah, so totally. the fact that you know, to hear London and Nico, and I w- I'm sure they have more stories about growing up, and just they're going to be- build even more and more stories going forward, and that's, to me... Their own stories. That's, to me, that's that's <laughs> future AFD episodes. Sure. That's how I look at it. So it's just a continuing story, and they seem to have a really good head on their shoulders uh, and supportive parents, and uh, just awesome. It so just I'm glad sad. you were able to be here with me. De- definitely, man. Thanks for having me. It was very uh, positive... Uh, just they just seem like they're in a very positive uh, situation, which is really cool to hear. So that concludes episode forty of Appetite for Distortion. Uh, I usually don't like saying who we may have for future guests because it may not happen, but mm. this one happened. So uh, th- these ones I will give you. They said yes to me in an email, so I can back it up if it doesn't happen. Uh, we will be interviewing uh, Christopher Thorne from Blind Melon. Um, that actually should have been episode forty, but uh, he came down uh he's like a sinus infection so we got to reschedule that of course blind melon and guns and roses uh toured and uh you know we can talk about the shannon hoon axel relationship so i'm really looking forward to uh, to that and i believe uh, they also have new music on the way so i want to hear a new blind melon and talk about you know there are bands that go through lead singers rather quickly mm-hmm. uh when they deal with a loss you know if like stp like, is it too quick so I want to get his perspective on that. Right, right. Uh, also, future episodes, again, these people said yes. Uh, Brain from Guns N' Roses. Uh, of course, the Chinese democracy uh, that, era of Guns N' Roses. That's an interesting one. I, yeah, you know, I want uh, to hear that. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm with every one of my guests. I'm respectful. I'm not going to ask any salacious uh, you know, questions, but just the fact that he agreed. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, and that's going to be in 2018, obviously. More big guests. Um, I'm also going to follow up and she said, yes, uh, Roberta Freeman, uh, from the, uh, user illusion tours. Of course, if you are familiar with, uh, the live era CDs, I have Tracy and Roberta here to help you, mm-hmm. Roberta. 
Uh, so she's going to come on. And uh, also going to follow up with uh, Kat, their official photographer. I uh, got to do that. And I feel like I'm, I'm missing even more uh, people. But the point being, there's a lot to look forward to in 2018 on the AFD show. So please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, both at the AFD show. But as far as the next time, you'll see an episode. We'll see you. Well, in the words of Axl Rose concerning Chinese democracy, I don't know if soon is the word, but you'll see it. You've been listening to the distorted minds of Appetite for Distortion. Follow the guys on Twitter at The AFD Show and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The AFD Show. security, I'm going home. Home. Home.